Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Xenoblade Chronicles. Last time, we went down there near Anti-Air Battery 1, took care of a bunch of monsters, completed many quests, and even did the same over by Outlook Park, which I swear is in this general direction, it's just that the cliff side is obstructing the view, obstructing, obstructing the view a little bit, can I talk at the beginning of this? All in the name of preparations for heading out towards Tefra Cave, which we will be doing a little bit later. But this time starting off, I want to head back to the commercial district in Colony 9, because there are a few quests available here at nighttime that we weren't able to take care of before. Well, rather we could have, I just didn't want to delay the trip out there last time, and none of these quests have us going out to those two areas anyway, so I kind of figured this was a good time to take care of it. As we're walking around the commercial district, we got a quest giver ahead who's checking out a store without there being any shopkeeper there. Hope you're not thinking of doing anything naughty. Oh no, he just wants to make armor for his son. That doesn't sound suspicious at all. He needs small scales to do it. And we'll accept this quest. Now, the cool part is, you get these from Piranhaxes, which were the enemies that we were fighting alongside that Lake Magdalena, or whatever that's called. And because we've already fought those enemies, we already have a small scale on us, and yep, he only wanted one. We completed it effortlessly. I have no idea why he thinks that one scale from a little fish is going to protect his son and make armor for him, but anyway. I'm going to change the clock to daytime right here because we have a quest in the commercial district during the day. I know that contradicts things a little bit. Is it because I didn't know that it was here or I forgot about it? Actually, no. There is a very good reason why I didn't grab this last time, believe it or not. I know, sometimes I actually have logical thinking. I want friends to defeat Wallside Grinry at Magmal Ruins. Other day, I almost get eaten by Gwynry and, other sm and smaller critters. Thought was my dying day. Because this enemy is in Tefra Cave near the Magmel Ruins, we could not have accepted this quest until we were heading out to Tefra Cave, so he would not have given it to us before. Answer, strong warrior. Bash monsters on head. <laughs> uh, some people find the Nopon annoying, but personally, I always love just seeing what they're going to say next, because their speaking patterns are just so wacky and off the wall and out there that... You never know what's going to come out of their mouth. It's very random, and it just makes it fun to talk to them. At least I think it does. Random, weird, and you're not sure what's going to come out of their mouth next. Sounds kind of like me. Uh, back back on track. Seems this guy wants to make a trap for catching insects. Will you help a guy out? You bet we will. He wants plate snow. I don't know how snow is going to help him catching insects. Maybe like it'll melt into water and he hopes they'll drown or something. I don't know. But usually when you want to catch insects, you want them alive. I don't know, but... Either way, we had plate snow on us, so we completed that one instantly. Not only that, but there's a red item orb for a search quest that we already had. Completed search quest four immediately. That was the spanner that we needed for that guy that was over in the residential district. Completed two quests right there really quickly. And that only leaves one that I want to take care of, which it's kind of odd how you get to it. You might have seen an exclamation mark. Actually, you can see it right now. And the way that you get up to that quest is really strange. You walk up these stairs over here. And once you head up, you'll be on the second floor of this area. Walking back around, we will meet Desiree. Hello. Oh, Shulk, there you are. I've been looking everywhere for you. I've broken my watch. Look, it's in pieces. I'm terrible with machines, even little ones like this. Would you mind fixing it for me? You don't have to be good with machines to be careful with them. <laughs> you just have to be careful. <laughs> Wasn't your father good with machines? I'd have thought fixing things would be your, the first thing he'd teach you. Not just good, he was amazing. When I was little, I used to marvel at how he swung that hammer. But he's gone now. It's as hard as I try, I can't be like he was. I'm I'm sorry, Desiree, I didn't mean to be rude. Aw, oh, it's easy to make you go all timid, seriously. Don't worry about it. It's been a year since then. I'm back on my feet. Anyway, are you going to fix my watch or not? Here we go, the broken watch! This is our first example of a quest that only a certain member of the party can accept. Ryan would not have been able to accept this quest, only Shulk may. And that is because we all saw how careful and good with machines Ryan was earlier, so only Shulk's gonna be able to fix this thing. He needs to head back to the lab for that, so once again with Desiree's watch, well, not with Desiree's watch, but once again in general, we're heading back to the lab. He seems to have to go there for a heck of a lot of things, and this is no exception. Bad news about Desiree's watch, it's worse than I thought. I haven't got the right parts, I need three blue chains. Which we already had. I don't know what he means we don't have them. We already did. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Great, I can fix it now. <laughs> that text is just so awkward with the fact that we actually already had them. It's working perfectly now. Desiree will be glad. There we go. We got Desiree's watch in fixed form, and now we just need to head back and see her. Yes, we fixed it. All right. I'll take much better care of it from now on, I promise. I'm glad everything worked out. And there we go. Affinity. 
Shulk, what would you say if I told you I broke it on purpose? Oh. So I had an excuse to talk to you. Kidding, kidding. Yeah, sure, you are really kidding. Apparently Fiora's got competition. <laughs> anyway, thanks again. You are so reliable. There we go. For completing that, we got Muscle Up 2. This is our first example of a gem that we found. Whenever you have equipment that has empty slots on it, you can equip gems to them to customize your equipment. Basically, think the materia from Final Fantasy VII, but not limited to just your weapons. You can have it on anything. Muscle Up gems increase defense, which I would typically want to put on Ryan. Problem is, none of his equipment right now has any slots on it, so I'm going to want to switch out at least one thing so that I can equip that. I think I'll switch out his shoes. He has 69 physical defense right now, <laughs> and I'll have 61 after we switch to these light shoes. So you're thinking that we're probably not going to get that many points from it? Wrong! 76! Very much worth it. Now, on another note, but still talking about equipment, I have a bit of a dilemma. I have these nine bottoms equipped to Shulk right now, and I have these swimming trunks which will give him more in two stats, so it is legitimately better equipment, by a few points, give or take. Problem is, when I equip them, it puts him in his underwear. And as you would guess, there are some fairly serious scenes that take place during this adventure. And for that reason, if a piece of equipment makes the character just look utterly ridiculous or puts them in their underwear, I think I'm going to ignore it. Don't let that stop you from equipping stuff on your own time if you want to do that. And we got an achievement that hits a slot for equipping our first gem. But I just think I'm going to be ignoring pieces like that. So what's next for us? All these green crowns mark completed quests for us. There are a few quests that we haven't done, but they all either involve some random collectible we haven't yet gotten from item orbs and I haven't wanted to trade yet because there's still a very real chance that we might get them just purely out of luck, or it involves monsters that we'll be fighting in Tefra Cave, which we're heading off to now anyway. I'll accept one. Stone... <laughs> Grab the wrong one. Stone Crabbles in Colony 9. Yes, these are found near Agora Shore, and we haven't been to Agora Shore yet. Do you want to know where Agora Shore is? I gotta hop down here, and I am not joking, we have to swim clear across all of Colony 9 to get to that shore that I showed you back when we were headed to the military district for the first time. Yeah, it is that far away. And there are no other quests that take you out that far this early on. None. This one quest is just selfish and makes you go out that far just for it. And you know what? I'm gonna freaking do it. Okay, fine. I do have kind of a silly way of dealing with this that is not just making you see it at full speed. Let's do this. Cue the first swimming stage music that comes to mind while I'm editing this. No matter how unfitting it may be. Sure, holy balls, or holy orbs, I should say, in this situation. There are items scattered everywhere. We got, oh god, a plain armor. Ugh. I don't know if you've noticed yet, though, but the color above an enemy will indicate difficulty. If it's red, that means that you're going to have a very difficult time. And considering that they're, like, level 30, I, wow, can't imagine why I completed a quest without trying to. All right, so, um, I don't see any stone crabbles around here, so let's change the time. There we go, they're here in the daytime, silly me, my bad. Let's attack you. Hammer beat, Ryan says. Let's go ahead, back, let's backslash. I guess we can inflict break if we really want to. I don't really think, it, I can't, didn't really have anything else to do. It's toppled, it's completely helpless. Unfortunately, I don't have my talent art to use in this kind of situation. It's always painful when you topple an enemy, but you just legitimately don't have arts to really use against them in that vulnerable situation. So we defeated our first one, got a rock crabble shell and a small shell, so that's yet another one. Beginner's luck for an achievement? Um, I don't know off the top of my head what that is, so I'll show you on screen right now what it does. Other stone crabbles right here. We can't lose! Leave it to Ryan! Leave it to Ryan! Oh, you jerk! Put your back to the wall so I can't... Ugh, really? Uh, I got the right let's do this achievement that is a hundred arts used as shulk So of course when I'm about to cut it out I have important stuff happen in this battle always how it is Completed that monster quest and yeah unintentionally completed a collection quest in the process So I guess it wasn't a completely selfish quest considering that we got one other knocked out All right That does it for every quest that I wanted to take out here in colony 9 except for collection quest 3 Which we could still very well complete at random. I think that's like the fourth time. I've said that <laughs> 
So you can see how far we actually swam. Yeah, there's even more stuff over here, but we'll be getting into that later, of course. With all those quests completed and back to the main entrance, we're heading out for Tefra Hill, and then on the other side of that, Tefra Cave. I, I can't say enough good about this music. I know that I praised it last video as well, though, but just how it fits the fact that you're just going out into the field, you know, it, it gives me that feeling of when you leave... I can't believe I was about to say this. I was about to say it gives me that feeling of when you leave the first area and you're about to set it on a grand adventure, which that it really does fit the mood perfectly because that is what we're doing here. It's kind of funny. If you want to consider getting either cylinders from Tepper Cave a grand adventure at the very least. <laughs> Backslash took care of those two without even acknowledging their existence, but we did need them for a monster quest. We get these chests. And there we go. God, that was that was bad. I'm just like it's, it's the, it sounds like you're really going on an adventure, but you know what I mean. It just has that feel to it, and I can never get enough of it. Let's not talk about that again. We got wood bunnets right here, which we need for a quest. Shouldn't be hard at all with it only being level 4. Now it's Rhyme time. See, it just comes up all the time. It's like, in a world where the only time is Rhyme time. I, I don't know where I'm going with that, but either way, it is always Rhyme time somewhere. That is what I have learned by listening to that man. Up here, we got the other wood bunnets that we need for that quest. Whoa! Uh, two level ups, achievement ground down, and a silver chest. Damn! I am lucky. Ooh, Shulk learned a new art! Ah, oh, I get to show that off soon. All right. Let that be a testament to the fact that you don't have to grind. Just from battling that one enemy we needed for a quest, I got a quest completed, two level ups, a new art learned, and an achievement all at the exact same time. Like I said, if you just grab quests you see them, you don't need to grind, and I think that right there was the greatest proof of that we've seen yet. Uh, I, I don't know how else to describe it, it just feels very satisfying when you do stuff like that. <laughs> I don't mean to get off topic. Evil Rangrot. Rangrot. Sounds like some kind of disease. Uh, this is a unique monster. It uses, it's basically a bigger wood bunnet. Let's take it out. So, Shulk's new art. Shadow Eye reduces aggro and improves physical arts. Typically, whenever Shulk's in a bad situation where the aggro gets on him and Ryan can't get it off, or in an instance like this, really, I like to use it. It'll increase your damage, but it greatly reduces the current aggro you have with the enemy, so it's a nice way to get out of trouble very quickly. Uh, Bunnet Combo 2 there didn't really do much damage to Ryan. It is only a level 6 after all, so unique monster or not, you kind of have the really bad level disadvantage. Backslash, get the extra damage, and... Wow, this little hand but Oh, wow, he actually did help. I was about to say the little hand bunnet there isn't even bothering to help his big, presumably, master. But sure enough, he did. Just because Ryan used hammer beat and it happened to connect with him as well. So that's what I was talking about, about getting enemies into battles that weren't initially part of it. Finish off this Rangrot. Oh, wait, before we do. Increase affinity, and there we go. Gold chest. Challenge one complete. Open up this, and do we get equipment for that? Indeed we do. Messenger shoes, and we got a driver for Ryan. Bunnet paw, nine top. Okay, we're doing well. You might have noticed that some enemies have dropped crystals. That's actually important for a little bit later. I'll be talking about that when we can actually use them, but we can't do anything with that quite yet. I've been meaning to acknowledge that for some time. And speaking of items, we've probably almost completed the Collectopedia page for Colony 9 and can get all the items from that. Now, you can do this whenever you want, and I recommend filling in your Collectopedia often, but personally, I'm going to be showing the Collectopedia page at the end of an area. Just because by that point, I can probably complete it, and I can show you any and all trades that you can do in that area to help you finish any gaps you might have. And because we're retrieving the Ether Cylinders, that kind of implies that we're going to be coming back to the colony. And speaking of the colony, look over there. Yeah. Look at how far we've come. That tiny little speck. Okay, no, not tiny little speck. I'm exaggerating, though. But that's the colony down there. And you can see Agora Shore way off in the distance. And all the anti-air batteries, too. We've come really far. And again, this is just one area. Once again, I don't mean to repeat myself too much, but it is. And I'm being kept from that quest over there. Wonderful. You forgot something. You will be needing the transport cases. Right? Fiora. <gasps> ah. I'm coming along as well. I'd feel better going with you boys than sitting at home worrying about you. So, let's get moving. <sighs> I knew she didn't trust me. Looks like it. 
didn't really think she was going to trust Ryan with Shulk there. Yep, we got a full party of three now. Shulk, Ryan, and Fiora. Awesome to have all three of them together all at once. Now that we have three members in the party, we now have access to the party gauge. This will go up every time you get a bonus effect or a critical hit. So using backslash from behind, using slit edge from the side, inflicting topple, those kinds of things. The party gauge does a few things. When you have at least one of those three bars full, you may sacrifice one of those bars to revive a fallen party member. Should you get all three bars completely filled up without needing to use any of them, you can then activate a chain attack. Something that is incredibly powerful and I'll definitely be showing off next time we get into a fight. This also is a story memo right here, just whenever you don't have a story quest but you want to be reminded of what you need to do, you will have that and you can press X and R to instantly see what it was you're in the middle of doing, like so. Uh, that guy who was giving out quests was standing right over here. I don't know why he moved over this way, but we might as well talk to him because going into the cave, can you kill a Willow Bunniv for me? They attack in packs, so it can be quite a nuisance. Uh, you think a Bunniv is a nuisance. Uh, that's cute. <laughs> Honestly, I kind of would like to keep a Bunniv as a pet. Like, wouldn't that just be so cute, just having, like, a... It'd be like a bunny crossed with an apom, you know? It's got, like, a little hand in its tail, and it can, like, do all kinds of tricks with it if you trained it well. Ah, uh, that'd be so cute. I'm sorry. Uh, we got Mel Lizards here, which Fiora was talking about earlier, so that does indeed confirm that there is a Mel Lizard nest in this area. We've gotta hunt five of them. Ooh, alright. You're a brave one, remember. You're doing this for everyone in the Defense Force. Yeah, what good is the Defense Force, really, when they're just asking some nerd in the Weapon Development Lab to take care of it all for them? You're going to collect either cylinders? It's a bit of a job getting there, but ba getting back's easy. Why? Because you can just jump into the water. Might be a bit scary, though. <laughs> Considering how high up we are above that water already, I can only imagine. Now that we've gotten to the entrance of Tever Cave, I do want to end things off before we head inside and explore a brand new area. But first things first, there was something last time that I didn't acknowledge that I really should have, but we were speeding up at the time, so I didn't have a good time to talk about it. Shulk learned a new skill. On the skill tree I equip, Shulk learned Battle Cry, increases tension gain from battle start affinity. That means that when you press B successfully at the start of a battle and Shulk is in it, you will gain more affinity to start out. And that's it for Shulk. As for the other two, Ryan's close to something on Spirit and Fiora's close to a new skill on Courage, but neither of them have learned anything new, so nothing to show there. Now that's not the only thing I want to go over here. I want to show you the party section of the affinity chart which we haven't seen yet. When you first load up the affinity chart, you'll see this, and if you hit A, you can see the affinity between your party members. Shulk and Ryan have leveled up to green affinity, whereas Fiora thinks that both of them are still idiots. Well, okay, Shulk's not an idiot, he's just clueless, but that aside, there is a heart-to-heart -heart right here, and you need to have at least green affinity between Shulk and Ryan to view it. Enduring friendship. Every time we come up here, it brings back memories. Same for you, right? Yep, we've been through a lot together, you and me. Oh yeah, you remember that time? You know, that one time! Of course, Ryan would be going on and on about time. And we had that big fight. That's the one. It's easily the biggest bust-up we've ever had. In all the years I've known you, nothing else has come close. It was bad, alright. I'm just glad we made up afterwards. You know, for such a big argument, I don't even remember what it was about. We were really young. It was probably just some silly kid thing. You're probably right. Hey, Shulk, do you ever think about it? Without me bringing it up, I mean. Of course. I think about it sometimes. If we'd never had that argument, I don't think we'd be friends now. That's just what I was thinking. We must have said some pretty harsh things to each other. But it was worth it, right? That's why we're such good mates now. Yeah, it was definitely worth it. You know, it's funny how we think alike sometimes. I'd have figured you were still angry. Nah, not anymore. But you did get on my nerves a bit back then. You were just too clever, man. It got under my skin. And I thought you were just this big dumb brute. Hey, I guess it's what we were arguing about. Yeah, that sounds about right. But after all that fighting, we came out stronger. And we learnt about each other. You know, I don't say this enough. Thanks, Ryan. I couldn't ask for a better friend. No problem, Shulk. Aww. And remember, you don't have to hold back. You can call me a big dumb brute anytime you like. I'll take it on the chin. Aww, their friendship is so adorable! Only one word for a moment like this. Heartwarming. And we got that achievement. So we got that heart-to-heart -heart taken out. I'm gonna be doing all the positive choices from here on out now that we have the heartbreaking achievement out of the way, just because I want everybody to be friends here. What better reason can you think of? 
But are we done here? Not quite. I want to head back to the commercial district. I know, I know. I made all that progress towards Tever Cave, and I'm just going back to the colony to do more quests. Okay, I know, it's kind of painful. But there's a quest here that we could only do with all three of them together. We haven't had them all together until now. And there is quest text that's going to be important coming up pretty soon, so I wanted to tackle it right here and now. I'm going to switch control over to Fiora and switch the clock over. And there we go. And after a few seconds, we got Marsha right here. Deary me, my grandsons are having quite the altercation. Cool word. And now to get the upper hand, they're both in training. That is a worry. Got affinity between Fiora and Shulk right off the bat, of course. Have you heard anything have you ever heard anything so ridiculous? I sure haven't. I do hope the younger of the two wins though. Wait, you're picking sides, even though you just said it was ridiculous. So she wants to take biscuits to him to encourage him to train harder because she wants the younger of the two to win. They're both family, says Fiora here. Oh, that's right, Fiora, you wouldn't know. Anyway, that's our business. I shouldn't have said anything. In any case, would you mind helping me with this? We got biscuits for a grandson here. I'm most grateful my legs aren't what they used to be, you see. Even getting to the residential district is awkward. I'll make you some biscuits. Okay, I'll give it my best shot. Yeah, Fiora, let's solve this one together. Aw, together. Yeah, that sounds great, Shulk. <laughs> so awkward, yet so cute. All right, there we go. We got the biscuits from Marsha right there. And uh, apparently Marsha's never been to the residential district because she could just skip travel there. Okay, no, not really. It's not a teleportation thing. Your characters outright are walking that distance. You're just skipping ahead of all the walking. That's why it's called skip travel, so it's not a teleporter or anything like that as much as I'd like for that to be the case. So let's head over this way. And we need to find Jerok here in the residential district. Thing is, Jerok only comes out at nighttime, so let's go and switch the time. He's here now, and he's beating up on a tree to train. Apparently, his big brother's got a thick skull or something. Are those Grandma's biscuits? She really shouldn't have gone to all the trouble. Thanks for bringing them for her. Please thank Grandma for me as well. So we took care of that, and we have yet another objective on this quest. You, we want to go back and see Marsha one more time. And we're back! With that orange exclamation mark over her head, that means that we'll complete the quest by talking to her. Indeed, we took them there. He's a good boy. He's sweet. Oh, what a relief. Another problem solved. She's relieved that she thinks her grandson is sweet. I'd kind of hope that that's the case. You're on his side too, aren't you? I guess everybody wants the underdog to win to a degree. We got swimming sandals for completing that. She said she was going to make us biscuits. Perhaps the sandals are the biscuits with a strap on them that you wear on your feet? Uh, let's not get further into that. Now that we have all that side stuff out of the way, how about we shift it back to evening just as it was before we did all the side stuff, just in the spirit of keeping things true. We have come this far, and next time on Xenoblade Chronicles, we're heading into Tefra Cave at long last. See you guys then.